Okay, to continue on with lesson five, let's start with a review. Name a command line tool that you can use to check connectivity between your computer and a DNS server. Yes? Uh, IP config all. That's not going to check connectivity, it's going to check that you've got one assigned. Yes? Ping. How would you use that to check to make sure your DNS is configured properly? Or you've got connectivity to the DNS server? Jessica? What's that? NS lookup is one way of checking. Ping was actually right, and so is NS lookup. Ping is, yes, Austin? Um, other trace route or You're mumbling, son, I can't hear you. Trace route or path So here's the deal. What does DNS do for you? What does DNS do for you? Larry? It automatically assigns you an IP address. It resolves host names to IP addresses, right? So, one more question. How did I prove that my DNS server, I'm able to communicate with a DNS server using the ping command? Yeah. <coughs> okay. If I type, yes, Jessica. No, ping loopback is going to tell me that. I can communicate with my own network interface adapter. Maybe. Okay, take a look at the screen. Does anyone else have a guess on this? So my question is, yes. And then, okay, so give me a domain name. Um, you can find it by doing IP config backslash display DNS. And then that will give you IP config <coughs> space. What is it? Uh, display DNS. I can't read that. Is it spelled right? Holy cow. It must be. I'm guessing it's working. <laughs> um, that's kind of a roundabout way of doing it. So what is, give me some of those post names. www.pullet.k12.in.us. It's kind of like a DNS lookup. I've got a simpler way of doing this. And actually, he brought it up earlier. And that is, if I ping, an IP address, ping 8.8.8.8. .8 I get a reply, right? Now look at the first line, it says pinging 8.8.8 .8 with 32 bytes of data, reply from. So what's that telling you right there? It's active. What? That it's active. No, what's active? DNS. How's that telling me DNS is active? Because it's. Well, 8.8.8.8 that that may or may not be my, okay, let's ping another IP address that's not a DNS server. Come on, guys, think. So right there, it's not telling me anything about DNS. It's just telling me that IP connectivity is working to that server, which is out on the Internet, 8.8.8.8. .8 if, however, I ping driving dot com. Tell me the difference between the display for just <coughs> pinging the IP address, which is up here, versus this one. What's the difference? What's that? Raise your hand. Yes. If you're pinging the website, it needs to be a 
So if I'm pinging the website name, in this case, hoosierdriving.com, I still get a reply back. It's still sending 32 bytes of data, but it has to resolve that host name before it connects to it. So I get a reply and a resolve. You can see that it's resolving because it says ping www.hoosierdriving.com and that gives me an IP address right after it. Okay? So we know it's properly resolving. If a website is blocking ICMP traffic, what happens when I ping it? Austin Howell, mid on. You don't get anything back. Huh? You get anything back. What do you get? Uh, lost packets. And Request timed out. <coughs> Request timed out. Just because it's blocking ICMP traffic doesn't mean the website's down. They may be blocking IP traffic or ICMP traffic but allowing HTTP traffic, which is what you really care about. So using ping by itself doesn't necessarily get the job done. However, if I were to ping a website name, www, and I know the website name is valid, uh, let's, let's try one that I don't, www.gibberish.com. Um, Where do I get back? Somebody read that from up front, Jordan. Did I actually say ping? Ping gibberish.com. It actually resolved. There's somebody who's actually named their website or it has a host name registered called skskskkks.com. -S -S Probably a white supremacy site. It's not like someone but that's a fan of the gun, the SKS. Yeah, okay. All right, so it resolved. Okay, how about this? Ping, uh, blah, 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 dot com. <laughs> so they're different IP address? Yes, it is. All right, it's the same IP address, so they're going to try to resolve it. So basically that 198.185.244.11 most likely is the school's website. In a normal environment, what you'll get is host name not found. That tells you that Either one of two things. You either <coughs> typed in the host name wrong or the website wrong, or the DNS server is not working properly. So the way to find out if your DNS server is configured properly and it's working is if you're able to ping a host name and it resolves. Not necessarily replies back, but resolves. You'll want to remember that because you'll see it on the test. Okay, going back to the slide. So the ping ping command is used for troubleshooting. It can be used in a lot of different ways. What's the trace route command used for? I got it. I saw your hand, Austin. Trying to give somebody else another shot, buddy. Aaron shows up once in a while, Kleckner. Uh, it's just a path. Shows a path of what? What's in between, what's in the path? Okay, and each one of the routers, there's another name for it, what's it called? How many, if, if I ask how many, you can see it in the command over there. Every router is, is called a what? A hop, lots of hops in between me and whatever that is, udc.com, traceroute udc.com. Okay, so a lot of different routers. So it gives you not only the name of the router, it gives you their IP address, uh, which can also indicate where it's physically located. When would you use this? Give me a practical application of when you would use this, Gabe. When what? You need to find somebody <clears throat> now I could just use ping for that. Give me a reason to use this. Seth. <clears throat> um, 
Trace route. Look up at the screen. You can see what you're doing. You're getting all kinds of routers. It um, helps display the file for the command. It helps display what? The help file for the command. No. Nope. Look at the screen up there. It's telling me how many routers are in between me and the target. So what would I use this for if I'm troubleshooting? Um, I don't know. Yes. All right. To see if uh, like a router is malfunctioning and if it's direct redirecting it to a different router. So okay. Then you can troubleshoot just that router. So I can figure out which system. router is giving me problems. Okay. Well, it'll tell me. Well, so so here's the scenario. I go to www.hoosierdrivers.com. The website doesn't come up. Okay. So let's say someone else is able to get it up and running, somebody at a different site. But nobody at your location can get that website up, and you know it's up and running. Maybe it's your website. Okay? So you know the site's working, and you know it's being published on the internet, and you know it's resolving properly to other people. So it could be a lot of different things. So the first thing you do is do a trace route to it. And it comes back, instead of trace complete with all those routers in between, you get asterisks all the way across after about the third hop. And then you know if that third hop is your own router, you've got a problem with your own routers. If that hop is your ISP's router, then you've got a problem with the ISP. So that's the starting point for troubleshooting connectivity. And it allows you to troubleshoot other people's networks, not just your own. If it requires other people's networks to get your to, de to your destination, you'll be able to figure out where it is. Thus the story that I gave you, apparently, that nobody listened to on Thursday, that talked about helping out the customer, um, helping out Comcast find their lost router. Yes, Austin? Um, the other day, like it was last week now, um, on Saturday, I think it was, there was a table at the Kiosk Mall. The what? That were happening. They were having a problem with their stuff, and I told them to do that, and they said it would probably speed things up. They, they said that pathing or trace route would <coughs> screw things up? No, no, I told them to, um, to use pathing to see if it's actually their router before they, they call them so they don't have to just sit yeah. in the waiting line. Yeah. And they said it would probably help them. Oh, it would help them. Good. So you're able to actually use something you learned in class. That's good. All right, pathing, as Austin mentioned, it can help you in a lot of different ways. It not only gives you the information up here that you're used to with Traceroute, but it also gives you a bunch of information down here. What's this information down here? Oh. <coughs> Rip, raise, raise your hand if you've got an answer. Someone other than Austin. Quentin. All this information down here, what's it telling you? Packet loss. Why is that of any value? To show like along the line and if there's being any packets just dropped. Yeah, if I'm getting significant packet loss on any of those hops, the router may be functioning but not functioning properly. And again, so you can troubleshoot where your problem is. All right, brand new material. Let me MBT staff. <coughs> Give me an example. Well, first of all, if you've read the material, you should know this. What's that BIOS? What's that BIOS? No one knows this. That <coughs> BIOS. All of you, push-ups. Just kidding. Net BIOS. What is Net BIOS? Frank, what's Net BIOS? Everywhere. What do we use Net BIOS for, Josh? Too late. Jessica, what do we use NetBIOS for? Can someone please close that door? So that when I start yelling, they won't call social services? Yes? It's a communication protocol. Exactly. Elaborate, Josh. It is used for local area networks. What else? Come on, more info. This is pathetic. Take an active role. Quentin. It does allow applications. I need 
what what makes NetBIOS significant? What is, make, makes it different than TCP? Are they cooking across? Am I small onions inside me? Yes, mostly. Okay, great. What? Lose that. You take your notes with that. What's the matter with it? It's updating. All right, pull out that. Witchcraft. That bias. <coughs> no one knows what that bias is. Read me exactly what it says in the book about NetBIOS. NetBIOS was developed in the 1980s to allow applications to com communicate over a network via the session layer, the OSI model. NetBIOS over TCP IP sends the NetBIOS protocol within TCP and UDP sessions. That's what I have. That's all it has? No, that's what I got. I don't all right, all that's blah, 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 blah. NetBIOS, <laughs> when you type a computer name, not a host name, there is a difference. Remember this, everybody looking, look at me. This is very important you understand this. NetBIOS is a protocol used primarily in Windows networks way back when. We don't use NetBIOS anymore. We want to avoid NetBIOS. NetBIOS is bad. Everybody can remember that. NetBIOS is bad. It's like broadcast. Broadcast bad. <laughs> Unicast, good. NetBIOS, bad. TCP or UDP, good. NetBIOS is used, for example, your computer name. There are two names for that computer. One is a host name, one is a NetBIOS name. Someone give me an example of a host name for it. Fully qualified domain name is another way of stating it. Yes, text. 192.160. That's an IP address. Give me a host name or a fully qualified domain name. Fully qualified domain name is pc35.crossroadsacademy.com. That is a fully qualified domain domain name. PC what number? 135 is the host name part of it. Crossroads Academy is the second level domain part of it. .com is the top level domain. That's a fully qualified domain name. It's used with a DNS server, or it's used with a host file. PC135.crossroadsacademy.com is a fully qualified domain name. Type that in your little notes. FQDN. FQDN equals PC135.crossroadsacademy.com. The net bios name that is probably associated with that is what? Sweat the small stuff, get the big message. Frank, if PC135.crossroadsacademy.com is a fully qualified domain name, what is the net BIOS name for that computer? Most likely. Doesn't have to be. Yes? PC135. PC135. It's that simple. Okay, it's that simple. Okay? The net BIOS name is that, we call it computer name, okay? Most modern networks, if I ping space, and if it's a good network, ping space PC135, I will not get a result. Why? Because if it's a good network, someone has turned off net BIOS on all the devices. Because why do I want to turn off net BIOS on all the devices, Jill? Oh, I made you write this down. Net BIOS is bad. It broadcasts. Okay? Net BIOS is bad. Net BIOS is bad. It broadcasts. What else is bad? Michael. What else is bad? Broadcasts. Outstanding. And they're both the same. They both do they both make too much noise on my network. They keep other devices which are important from communicating. So we've got to get rid of that box, we've got to get rid of, of uh, broadcasts. 
NetBIOS over TCP IP sends the NetBIOS protocol within TCP and UDP, UDP sessions. It's extraneous. Look that one up. Okay, it's superfluous. We don't want it. If you have a good network, you won't need it. And we all have good networks here, don't we? Those seats you're sitting on, those are other people's furniture. Okay, so if, however, you are using NetBIOS, then a command that you could use goes. It's called the NBT stack command. It tells you all of the NetBIOS devices that you've connected to and everything that's sitting in your cache. What's cache? Cache is pretty much just a place that's stored on, that's a little, sort of, it's a place stored on your computer that has uh, information about websites you've visited and whatnot so that it can help your computer load it faster. A cache could be a number of different things. It could be a listing of all the websites you've been to. It could be listing of all the computers that you've communicated with. Um, it could be lots of different things. But in this particular case, MBT stat hyphen a N, I think. I don't know, you'll have to look it up and you'll have to memorize it. it tells you all the NetBIOS devices that you've connect, connected to. How would I find out what the commands are that I would use with MBT stat quickly? How would I find all of the commands that I could use with MBT stat? Yes? Slash question mark. Slash question mark. How do I find all of the commands that I can use with IP config? IP config space forward slash question mark or is it backslash? I don't know. Try it. Okay. All of those commands, all those those uh, command line commands can be. You can figure out exactly which was last night. Nine o'clock last night. I'm loading Office 2016 on a server in California, right? I use something called the Office Deployment Tool, ODT. It downloads an Office Deployment Tool, lets you make some changes to an XML file, and then you can deploy, uh, in this case, Office 2016 to hundreds of computers at the same time with all of the changes that you want. I didn't know what the command was, for, or what the, the switch was for setup, using this ODT, um, this office deployment tool. So I typed setup space forward slash question mark. It told me all my switches, all of the um, syntax of the commands that I needed to use to be able to deploy this Microsoft Office. So it, it, that particular remembering that that switch, uh, space forward slash question mark, will help you figure out what you need to do. Um, okay, MBT stat space hyphen A. Uh, in this particular case, it's trying to find out all of the cache on this particular machine. Desktop hyphen lamp one must be the net BIOS name. The dash A, an MBT stat dash A says, hey, tell me what's in the cache on this particular machine. Don't confuse this with the net stack command. The net stack command is one that we continue to use today and it's very, very handy. Anyone know what the net stack command does? Quickly, besides text, Michael. Anyone know? Displays all the TCP and UDP connections. What's that mean? Quinn. All the what? All the hosts that I'm connected to. Okay? So why is that valuable? <coughs> yes? You want to know who's on your network. I want to know who's connecting to my computer. Right now, go to a command prompt, type netstat, space, hyphen, actually just type netstat. Cool, wow. 
Lots of connections. I have one. People are hacking you as you as you sit uh, as you sleep. Yes. As you sit here and sleep. I don't know why. ISIL is active on your network. Anybody see last night or yesterday that anonymous.org has has uh, declared war on ISIS, ISIL, whatever the heck the black jobs are? Or the Russians like that. First time you ever thought you'd cheer for anonymous dot well. I've never heard of that. You've never heard of anonymous dot work? Up until a couple weeks ago. Scary people. Yeah. Oh, everybody woke up. I start talking about a bunch of computer hackers who have wreaked havoc on the world, and you guys get excited. Well, you'll be excited, those of you who decide to take this class next year, we're going to switch it up. Instead of the second year students doing this kind of stuff, we're going to be doing instead modern internet. How to understand it, how to use it, and how to protect it. So security and understanding how to protect from hackers like you. <laughs> yes? Can I, can I take this class again? You're a senior. Yeah. No. Yes, Austin. Yeah. No, you can't take this class again. Whatever happened when, I, or when um, Anonymous declared war on Syria? I don't know. Syria isn't really a country now. Syria's yeah. Syria's kind of in a civil war right now. All right, so that stack command can be pretty handy. Here, here's actually a more practical use. Stop talking. A more practical use of the net stack command. So a user calls up and says, "Hey, I can't connect to this server. Okay, uh, I can't do something." So you log into the server. You type a net stack command. And you find out that indeed, from that server, you are connected to this particular user. So clearly, you have some connectivity. Kind of this user has some connectivity kind of to the server. Now you just need to figure out. Okay, so that is at one layer. Now you know that they've got physical access to it. So now the question is, what layer is blocking them? What layer of the OSI model is keeping them from being able to do what they want to do? Could be this layer up here, most likely. Okay. Net stat, yes, sir. What is this things like close weight return? What does that mean? I, I can't remember. What? What says things like close weight or time weight? What is that? Close weight and time weight. Weight. A oh, weight. Okay, so the first one, time weight. You were trying to connect to it. And that close weight, I don't know. Uh, do, do, a, um, do a Google search or a Bing search on netstat <coughs> space, what is time weight? You don't use it. Yes, sir. Ah, great question. It has the IP address. Goes back to my last observation. I know you know this answer already and you're just setting it up, right? It says the IP address and then colon numbers. What are those numbers? Four numbers, eight numbers. Oh, come on. 10.40.10.200 colon 572 something or other, 800. Jessica, that's the port that they're connected in, right? If I were an email server, there's another use for it. If I had an email server, I want to find out if people are able to connect to it on port 25, I would do net staff from that email server and see how many connections are on port 25, how many open connections, okay? Time wait, I'm guessing it's sitting there with that port open, yeah. waiting for that particular port, right? That just kind of jogged my memory right there. What's what? F-I-N wait. F-I-N is one of those commands like end. 
guessing? Yeah. You know, I'm so FIM, FIM 1 is it's uh, close and it's trying to shut down. Yeah, it's trying to close up to the port. Don't know. Make sure it's closed and stuff doesn't really for shut down for the Okay. Alright, NS lookup. Rarely use it, however, 